Now we will learn random variable. Random variable is a measurable function from sample space S to real number R. To understand the measurable function, we need to know the sigma field. So, let us record the sigma field. So, sigma field is defined on a non empty set. Suppose S is a non empty set, suppose S is a non empty set, suppose this is the S set and we consider a collection of subset of S, suppose this is denoted by C. So, let us uh, consider one example, uh, remember the random experiment, random experiment suppose we are considering random experiment, this is tossing a coin. tossing a coin. So, then if you tossing a coin, so then what will be the outcome, what are the possible outcome, in which run whether head will come or tail will come we do not know, but we know all possible outcomes that is head and tail of this random experiment. So, then S is the sample space containing all possible outcome head and tail. So, for defining sigma field it is not required any random experiment just we are giving the example here. So, any non empty set you can take S can be R, here we are considering this set S is equal to head and tail. So, C is a some subset collection of set. So, we can consider this set, so subset, so suppose C contain two subset only, suppose null set, null set also a subset of S and also S is a subset of S, it is also a collection of subset. Also you can suppose let us take another suppose C2, C2 is considering phi, then H and then S. So, we have just included another subset, H is another subset of the S. Now, sigma field defined as, so C is a collection of subset of S, subset of uh, C is a collection of subset of S satisfying some property. So, a sigma field, a C is sigma field, if the following conditions are satisfied. So, following uh, properties we can say properties are satisfied. So, following the following properties are, so what are those properties? One is that the sample space, sorry, this is the set we are considering non-empty set, from where we are taking the collection of subset of S, collection of subset of S. So, one property is that S has to belongs to C. So, S also a subset of S. So, you can consider S or not, but here if C has to be sigma field, then S will belongs to C and if any set A belongs to C, belongs to C that means A will be a subset of S, then, then A complement also has to be inside C. So, A complement also in C and third condition is that if, if A1, A2, An countably infinite collection of subset of S, those are element of C are in C 
So, that means a i belongs to C for i is equal to 1 to n uh, dot dot infinity. So, not only up to n, it is up to dot dot dot. So, i is equal to 1 to. So, if a i belongs to C, a, a i belongs to C for all i at 1 to n dot dot. So, this is infinite, countably infinite collection of subset of A. So, those are inside C. If it belongs to C, then union of A i, if you take the union i is equal to 1 to infinity A i, that also belongs to C. So, that is the, that are the three conditions. So, the, if these three conditions are satisfied or the three properties, following properties are satisfied uh, by this collection of subset of A's, then C is known as sigma field. So, this is sigma field. So, for example, if you consider suppose this collection of subset of because it is also a, a collection of subset of S, then you can see that uh, S belongs to C and only S. So, that is why we have to consider uh, if A belongs to C that means S and phi are the only elements in C, then we have to just check those subset of C. So, uh, so those subset of S, those elements only we have to consider to check these properties. So, if uh, so that is why if you see that S belongs to C implies S complement. What is S complement? S complement is nothing but null set. So, that is also belongs to C because here we check that. Also, phi belongs to C, also phi complement also belongs to C. So, this property is also satisfied by this C. Now, here this condition A1 A2 infinite collection. So, if infinite collection, but here only two sets are there. So, if you take the union of those S union phi, uh, then also it is belongs to C. So, that is why uh, because, uh, because it is infinite collection in C. So, if you take any finite collection that is also will be belongs to C because remaining uh, uh, said you can take, take the phi and then uh, by this property uh, this condition also will be satisfied. So, here also you can see that if you consider infinite collection like A1 equal to S then phi 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 like this. So, infinite collection of uh, element in C like that then you, you take union then union will be nothing but union S union phi uh, S union phi union phi like that that also belongs to C because this is nothing but it is S which belongs to C. So, that is why this is a uh, this is a sigma field this is a sigma field. Now, if you consider this collection C 2. So, now for this C 2 you can see that S is belongs to C and then it is satisfied. Now, we have to check the second condition. Second condition it says that if a element A belongs to C, then it must imply A complement also belongs to C. Now, for S, S complement is phi, it belongs to C, no problem. For phi, phi belongs to C, but phi complement that is nothing but S, S also belongs to C. So, this is uh, actually we are considering C2, so we have to think that C2. So, this also belongs to C2, then this also belongs to C2. Now, if you consider this set A is equal to this H, now this is belongs to this uh, collection C2. Now, if you consider the complement of that, what is the complement? Complement of H is nothing but because S contains H and T. So, if you consider the complement of H, this is nothing but the set T. So, you did not, we did not include it in this set, we did not include it in this set. So, that is why this C2, uh, this property not satisfying. So, this is not a sigma field because for sigma field, this th three property has to be satisfied. So, uh, this is the sigma field. Now, we will uh, discuss what is measurable function. So, let us consider another sigma field. So, suppose you are doing a random experiment uh, rolling a die. rolling a die. Suppose you are doing a random experiment, you are rolling a die, then what will be the sample space? Suppose it will denote the sample space as S 2, 
this is nothing but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So, another thing I just want to mention. So, so, C2 is not a sigma field, we found that. Now, if you, uh, what, is, what was the problem? The problem is that this A, whenever we are considering A is equal to H, this complement does not belongs to T. So, now we want to, suppose we want to make this C2 uh, as a sigma field, then what uh, correction we have to make? So, keeping all this set, all the elements in this set, we just want to add more subsets of S, such that it will be a sigma field. So, how we can do that? So, suppose let us, uh, later we will discuss this. Uh, so, let us keep here, then we will discuss this. Suppose C2, we just take phi, then S, uh, then uh, we, we have taken uh, phi and then the set head, then S. Now, the complement also we are adding this T. So, let us see that it is a uh, sigma field or not. So, then you see uh, in, in that case, here you can see that uh, this property will be satisfying. So, basically here we are adding here, we are taking more, more element we will want to add. We saw, saw that it is not a sigma field, we want to just add here T also. So, then you can see that for element H, H complement is T, it is also in C. So, if now if I have add this T, then T complement is H that is also in the C. Now, if you take any union, finite union or uh, if you include, uh, there is no infinite collection the, if you take distinct element. So, you can uh, repeat uh, those things. So, infinite um, collection we, we just mentioned that finite things also it will be, if this property satisfied then finite for finite collection also it will be inside C this condition also will be satisfied. So, here we, we want to see that because if you take all this kind of union H union T, H union T is nothing but S. So, S union phi is S. So, then you see that all possible union if you consider it will be in C whatever. So, that is why it will be satisfied, uh, this C2 also uh, uh, will be a sigma field because this uh, third property is also uh, satisfied. So, this set actually this should satisfy because if you consider all possible subset of S, then that possible subset because it is a finite set will contain 2 to the power n number of elements. So, 2 to the power 2 this is nothing but 4. So, C2 also contain 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 subsets. So, that is why it is it contains all the subsets. So, all the subset is set considering. So, it is known as power set. So, it is known as uh, whenever you consider all subsets. So, if C contain, if let S be a non empty set, uh, then uh, suppose let omega denote, omega denote a uh, set of uh, set containing only the denote this set sorry omega denote the set containing all possible subsets of S. So, S be a non empty subset let omega denote this set containing all possible subset of S. So, the set omega is known as power set. So, power set means it contains all subset of S. So, obviously, power set is a sigma field because power set will satisfy all these properties. So, S belongs to C, A belongs to C, A complement because all the subset we have included there. Now, uh, so C2 is a power set, C2 is a power set. Now, let us uh, next we discuss this example random experiment rolling a die and then uh, this is a 
the subset is a non empty set S2, S2 is the sample space corresponding to rolling a die. So, it contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 element. So, if you consider the power set, then it will contain 2 to the power of 6 number of element in the power set. Now, let us consider not power set, some non trivial sigma field. So, let us consider one set H nothing but 1, 2 and 3 and another set B is nothing but uh, we can consider like that. So, let us consider some kind of uh, uh, some meaning is there for this set. Suppose consider the even number 2, 4 and 6 and B is the number 1, 3 and 5 sorry B is the uh, set set subset of H2 B is nothing but 1, 3, 5. So, uh, you can see that. So, now we want to find a uh, suppose sigma field generated by we say let us consider one uh, some sub collection of subset suppose C2 is here. So, we have already denoted C2 let us consider this is S1 and then let us consider this is C1. So, C1 is nothing but uh, just the set A only, only subset. Now, note that it is not a sigma field because uh, S is not inside here, phi is not, so S complement not here, A complement not here. So, we want to make a, this sigma field, we want to add more and more sets. So, we say sigma field generated by C1. So, we will take what are those properties here we want to include. So, sigma field generated by C1, it is nothing but this will be we have to include A is there, A complement we have to include, see that A complement is nothing but B and then S we have to include and also null sets. So, this is the sigma field generated by uh, C1. So, you can add more sets also, so that it is a sigma field, but it may be uh, we consider it is a smallest sigma field generated by C because if you remove any of the subset here, any of the elements here, then it will not be a sigma field. So, it is called smallest sigma field generated by CR. So, this is a sigma field. So, basically uh, A complement is nothing but B. So, A the set A B it is a sigma field. Okay. Now, we want to define, so there are two uh, set uh, uh, sample space are there. So, uh, S1 is one set. So, S1 is, so let us consider S1 and C1, C1 is let us denote uh, sigma field. So, C1 we consider this. So, let us denote this is nothing but F1, F1 is the sigma field generated by this C1. So, uh, and also, uh, so let us, so S1, F1 is the, sorry, F1 is the one sigma, uh, one sigma field, it is a non empty subset and this is the sigma field and, and S is nothing but the head and tail we talked and this C already uh, we have discussed that C is nothing but we consider here you can see that C is nothing but the null set and S. So, this is another or we can consider C2 this is the sigma field also we can consider. So, no problem let us uh, one minute. So, yeah. So, let us consider C2 is like this. Uh, S and C. Now, this is also sigma field, this is also sigma field. We want to define, so this notation is, uh, we want to dip the script f for, it is the standard notation. So, here also this is script f, it is not that small f. So, uh, now uh, we want to define a function between S1 and S, some function f is S1 to S some function we want to define. So, uh, we can define any function suppose um, a what S, S1 is, so S1 is nothing but it contain this is the suppose S1 is contain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and S2 is sorry S, S is the element H and T, two points, two elements are there. Suppose for all even number we want to map to head. So, or let us consider a constant function. So, if you con say consider a constant function, suppose f of any element in S, S1 or suppose x, 
f of x is equal to just h. So, this is a function. So, it is nothing but so for for any x, x belongs to any x belongs to uh, s1, s1. So, s1 is the so just this is the function I am defining. So, basically all point actually going to h. So, this is a constant function. Now, uh, you just check that we want to check. Uh, so, what is c? c contain uh, just two element. So, you can remember that c what we take c, c is phi and s, phi and s, phi and s. So, then uh, I just want to find what is f inverse of phi. f inverse of phi is defined by all x belongs to the uh, space this set s1 such that f of x is equal to f of x this number is belongs to the set belongs to the phi. So, now you can see that it does not contain any element satisfying this because f of x belongs to so, phi means it is null set none of the but f of x is h for any x. So, this will be again a null set null set. So, that is why but this null set is belongs to this f you can see that. Now, if you consider another set in C. So, f inverse of suppose C. So, this is h all x belongs to the element in S 1 such that such that f of x belongs to C. So, what is C? So, C we know that all the uh, sorry uh, on, on minute. So, we just C is a sigma field we want to take this set S. So, we want to take one another element of C. So, that is why uh, I just notation it is wrong it is S actually all element belongs to S. So, note that uh, if you consider x such that f x belongs to now what is f x? f x is h and s is contain h and t. So, for any x if you consider here any x if you consider in s 1 then f of x has to be belongs to s. So, that is nothing but all x it is satisfying. So, all x means here it is nothing but the all s 1 and this is also belongs to the sigma field uh, f. So, you know that you can see that for this function f, if you consider any element in this sigma field and if you take the inverse of that and then that is belongs to actually this sigma field. So, this kind of function known as uh, this function uh, known as, uh, so let us write here known as measurable function. So, what is measurable function? let so measurable function measurable function so what we understand the measurable function let uh, suppose let us denote s1 f1 and s2 f2 be two sigma field and a function f from s 1 to s 2 is set to be measurable function measurable function if for any element b belongs to f 2. So, that means this. So, this notation it should be script f. So, it is not just because otherwise you will confused with the uh, usual functional notation. So, f 2. So, for any element b belongs to this f 2, f inverse of b, f inverse of b that is belongs to f 1. So, that means if you take inverse of this so, f inverse of b how it is denoted? So, f inverse of b it is nothing but all x in the s 1 such that 
f of x belongs to b. So, this is called the f inverse b, it is denoted. So, if this is belongs to f 1, so for any b belongs to f 2, if because it is s 1 to s 2, then it is known as measurable function. Okay. Now, we will discuss a, a special kind of sigma field. So, because these are all little bit of abstract head, tail, uh, uh, throwing a die, so this will be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that is a real number, but most of the uh, phenomena in the uh, real life, uh, we describe by some abstract uh, type of, not, it may not be a real number. But if you uh, find uh, the observation like a real number or we can relate it with uh, some kind of real number then it will be very helpful for us for uh, understanding it. Because in the real, uh, real number we have learned many things like most of the algebra in from our school life, college life, many uh, algebra, algebraic properties, multiplication, addition, subtraction, not only that limit, continuity, sequence, series, all those uh, things already developed in the real number system. But uh, if you take any abstract set, so, we again we have to we need to develop those things. It may be, uh, it may be done, it can be okay, but uh, we have to again verify it or we have to develop all those concept or all this uh, result with what we uh, want to use it. So, if you can uh, relate it with this kind of abstract set because sample space is uh, most of the time it is a abstract. So, like head tail uh, for any event like earth coed. So, how you can relate with this with the real number then only we can understand it or, or we can uh, make the computation. So, uh, we want to uh, learn some special uh, sigma field, uh, special collection of subset uh, of uh, the real number. So, if you consider this uh, suppose real number S, suppose this set because we are considering non-empty set. So, 